Hello guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel and in this Let's Code session, we are going to take a look at Chart.js. Now, Chart.js is a scripting library that is used for creating charts on the websites and uh, it's a very popular library I may say for creating charts on your website. So, let's just jump into the code. Okay, so this is the Chart.js official website. You can go ahead to this Chart.js.org. From there, just go ahead and hit on download. Now we don't really want to download this uh, whole bunch of library uh, but what you want to do is go under this CDN and I just want to copy this. So the next thing that we want to do is open up Sublime Text, I'm sorry, uh, and go ahead create in a new file and let's just go ahead and save it. I'll be saving it in my documents folder and let's call this file name to be chart js dot html okay so now that we have got chart js dot html I just want to go ahead and grab in that html snippet and I wanna go ahead and type in the title for this web page and okay uh, script tag source equals to this and that's it so you have got chart js ready now and uh, if you want you can go ahead and grab in the jQuery if you feel it comfortable uh, but I, I'm not just going to grab it uh, so let's just go underneath our body tag and create in a canvas now inside the canvas we want to set in a ID width and I want to set in some height so now you can change these settings as per your wish but for the sake of this video, I'm going to ch uh, check out my canvas ID to be chart. I want to set its width to be 800 into height to be 600. Now it's this kind of resolution, I know. Uh, so let's just go underneath this and type in our script. So the very first thing that we want to do is just go ahead and create in a var named at chart ref. Now this gives a reference to our canvas with ID chart. So how you can go ahead and do it is document dot get element by ID and the element ID is chart dot get context. Now make sure that this you have got right. Now dot get context and the context will be 2D. Okay, so pretty much we have set our uh, chart ref and now I can simply go ahead and create in a chart which has a new chart now this is a class that we are referring to which is brought in from this particular JavaScript file and this new chart will give we will give a reference to our chart ref now after this uh, it's, it's just pretty much done and after this you can just go ahead and put in some other options like you can put in their line you can go ahead and put in their pie you can go ahead put in their dognut I, I don't re exactly know how to pronounce that you can go ahead put in radar or even uh, anything else that you want uh, anything else that is given over here in the chartjs.org website if you go in the documentation you will be able to find their line chart, bar chart, radar chart, polar area, and uh, die and pi and donut. So now we are pretty much set to do it, but we do not have any kind of data by now. So let's just go ahead and grab this data from over here. Now I'm going to show you a few things that you need to check out. So if you go ahead and take a look at this data, it's kind of JSON. Uh, and yeah one more thing make sure your data is fetched in before you create in your chart so I'll be just going ahead putting it in here okay um, so if you go ahead and take a look at this data variable it's a pretty much JSON now you can you can go ahead and grab in a JSON over here already uh, or JavaScript file with all this data put inside that uh, for the sake of this video, I have I just go, gone ahead and go pretty stop pretty. For the sake of this video, I have just went ahead and copied it in over here. So the first thing you can see is labels. Now every single 
data set that you will be creating in the chart.js should contain uh, every single JSON file should contain this all thing so label what are those labels now you can go ahead and che try checking them out uh, well first of all let's just go ahead save it for instead of pi let's say we want a line chart and I wanna go ahead and open up uh, from my documents chart js so that's our chart so you can go ahead and check it out the labels are pretty much went ahead over here and this has been auto generated by chart js and if you have checked it out it just shown me some kind of flies uh, some some kind of animation now this comes by default in chart js if you go up over here you'll be able to find their global chart configuration you can go ahead and change those configurations and uh, you can simply go ahead and add in another one variable over here named as option and then you can simply create in where option go ahead and copy it and make whatever the changes that you want but I'm not just going to do that so and if you if you want the default configurations you can just simply go to chart dot defaults dot global but you know if you if you are leaving it like this it's just going to set it to defaults so next thing after the labels okay let's just go ahead and try to check out what if we add one more label to this so let's just say I have added a label of uh, August then I have added label of September is that how you spell it uh, I'm pretty much weak at spellings September October November and December I don't really know the spellings but I hope so these are the spellings I don't know if it is B E C E. yeah yeah okay so let's just go ahead and try to refresh our page and now you'll be able to see that it just gives me information till July now what is the reason behind this is data sets now if you go ahead and try to check the data sets there are two data there are two JSON files in this data set first one contains label my first data set now my first data set is the one which is showed to you by white color and the second data set is one which is shown to you in blue color now if you want you can just go ahead and delete this second data set and uh, pretty much like if you have two different op uh, two different bars on your chart uh, I don't know two different lines on your chart then you can simply go ahead and put in there another data set there's a fill color it's a RGBA color uh, so you can go ahead and try checking it out you can go ahead and try to change it uh, change everything here and uh, yeah that's pretty much all of the information inside there so you can go ahead and change the fill color you if you do not want this kind of white grayish color you can simply change that well you can uh, I don't know if you can change the background of the chart or not so the next important thing is data inside our data set there's our JSON file named as my first data set and inside this there's something that says data now if you check January February March April May June July and that was pretty much all they had given with our with us so now if we go ahead and try to put in there some more values say okay this was for August September October November December uh, is that it yeah so you can simply check it uh, before there was no 99 or anything like that over here so it just automatically adjusted this chart over here you can simply uh, check this out um, before it used to give us uh, after checking it over here there were two colors given and in front of each color what what was the idea of that uh, so if we go ahead and now I'm just going to demonstrate this thing to you 
so let's just remove this this is say my second data set and let's just say I want to change this color to uh, uh, mm, 182 let's just go ahead and try to do it with 182 I don't really know what color is that but I hope so that color will be uh, a little bit different than uh, the first grayish color and let's just say I want to change this all to say 56, 95, 8, 18, 65 I'm just pretty much reversing those numbers and last one is 54 so now if you go ahead and try to refresh your page you will be able to see this very very interesting kind of chart so there are two data sets now as I said when I when we change the color uh, it's just trying to change that particular color if I set it back to 2 to 0 you'll be able to see that both of them look pretty much same and there's no kind of difference so uh, now you can see that there's some kind of color difference I changed the red value but I don't know how I don't know how that RGBA works but this is pretty much how it looks so now if you want some kind of bar chart it's really easy you can simply go ahead and put in their bar and yeah there's our bar chart uh, and yeah there's uh, pretty much big difference at some points like like over here there's 80 and 81 and 18 40 and 4 50 and 5 but you get the idea behind this all so there's bar chart then there's radar I don't really love radar because it's kind of messy and people are not going to know what the fuck is this so I don't really love it the next one after radar is um, maybe I should check out their website um, polar area chart now for this chart there's something different required now this time the data will be completely different so now let's just go ahead and I'll be just copying this data I'll remove this data variable over here and let's just go ahead and try out polar area with our data and now if you go ahead and try to check it out um, it, it displays us something different but make sure that if you are using the same data that we used earlier with our data variable it includes some data sets and uh, labels it's not going to work because as you can see over here there are no labels required there's just some kind of data in here and that's pretty much it and this this can be uh, and this is similar for pi uh, I love those animations by the way um, you can see the pi is completely awesome and yeah there's one more I don't really remember the spelling let's check if we get it right oh yes it is right so you can see it dogna do do fuck it donut or something like that uh, pi and uh, polar requires uh, different kind of data sets whereas the radar bar chart and the line chart requires some kind of different radar set, uh, some kind of different uh, data sets so make sure that your data sets are like that and make you even make sure that uh, your data set comes before you are creating your chart now if you are wondering what will happen if I put it after this well it's not pretty much being able to read this data from here because we have not defined any kind of data before this and now if we hit refresh we should not get anything and if you inspect the element and try to check out the errors there will be an error that it cannot read the property of data or data set whatever it may be so that was pretty much it for this video. If you love this video, just go ahead and hit that like button over there and you can go ahead and subscribe to my channel. There are more videos coming every night, every week. There are three videos coming out and recently there will be one video that will be about showcasing the new stuff. And uh, that was pretty much it for this video. And if you want, you can go ahead and check out my other videos too. And they are even they are they are pretty much cool. So see you next week, next Friday on Let's Go.